Democrats are scrambling 11 days out from the midterms and sending former President Obama to key battlegrounds, starting with Georgia, where the party's worried they might lose that pivotal Senate race. Just ask Senator Chuck Schumer. Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, how telling is that Georgia comment from Chuck Schumer? Well, first of all, could that conversation, could that have waited five minutes? I'm thinking the same thing. Right? I love hot mic moments. No, you don't. Well, <laughs> it's going to happen to you <laughs> one day, Shemkis. Believe well, I just me. think it's interesting to be a fly on the wall. You're right. It's yes. not good for the person that's caught in the hot you mic. You didn't have a room that you were going to go to on, I don't know, to your point, five uh, minutes? And the thing is, you have a 70-something... Chuck Schumer talking to an almost 80 Joe Biden. Of course, they're going to yell. Yeah. And there's cameras like 10 feet away. And I was on with Kelly uh, McEnany yesterday, and she had a pretty good theory that that was intentional. It could be. Right. Yeah, it did seem sort of staged. I agree with that. Right. Uh, so we're talking about Georgia. There's concern there. Politico has a headline, interesting headline out mm. this morning, and it warns that it's going to be ugly for Democrats as all signs point to a Republican landslide in Florida. And the piece talks about how Democratic donors are abandoning the state because it's no longer a com it's no longer competitive. Nor should it be. According to Democrats. Right. Ron DeSantis is probably Probably the most popular governor in the country right now based on his performance mm -hmm. and Charlie Crist is a profoundly horrible candidate and obviously that's going to trickle down to Marco Rubio uh, be beating Val Demings in that state but going back to Georgia real quick I I'm seeing polls now where you have Governor Kemp up 10 points on Stacey Abrams yeah. so if that's the case I can't see someone going in to a polling booth and saying I like Kemp but you know what? I like that Warnock guy, too. Right. For, yeah. for that to transfer over it. when it's double digits, your lead, I, that's why Herschel Walker is in, in a pretty good position there right Obama now. Do you think Obama will help Warnock at all or Abrams? The problem with Barack Obama going out there and campaigning for these folks, welcome to the party, pal. I mean, you could have campaigned maybe a couple days after Labor Day. To do this now after voting has begun, I, I don't know if Barack Obama at this point really resonates with voters because you connect Obama to Biden. Yeah. He chose Biden as his uh, vice president. And in all these states, these swing states, Joe Biden's polling in the 30s. That's a bad thing. So can it, it won't hurt because Barack Obama still put on a pretty good speech, but he should have done this a lot sooner. Good point. To Pennsylvania we go. The New York Times and ABC News rushing to defend John Fetterman there. Here are the headlines. Fetterman and Oz debate highlights ableism in politics. That was from ABC, while the New York Times explained how John Fetterman's appearance was a powerful moment. Joe, why is there no acknowledgement that you cannot actually perform the job of senator based upon John Fetterman's condition? This is an attack on disability. Yeah. There are a lot of jobs that you cannot perform in that condition. Quarterback, news anchor, senator. Right. Uh, my, my mom had a stroke. I've, I've shared that with you guys. And you could have empathy or sympathy for a John Fetterman and make the argument that you're making that that to do this job, it's a high-stress job, you have to debate on the Senate floor and make an argument, and you won't have the courtesy of closed captioning to do it. So taking all that aside, though, what arguments is John Fetterman making on how to lower inflation or how to beat crime or at least reduce crime in cities like Philadelphia? Philadelphia just set a record for the most homicides in its history, breaking the record from 2021. John Fetterman has been lieutenant governor of that state and letting prisoners out and advocates letting prisoners out that commit violent crimes. So put the health thing aside for a second in a purple state like Pennsylvania. Yeah. I don't see how John Fetterman's arguments ultimately win the day. And now we saw a poll out yesterday, Oz plus three. Oz was down double digits yes. just a couple of weeks ago. It's unbelievable. Well, the <laughs> gap that uh, Oz has closed over the past few months. And you are right. It is more than just about health. It's also the policy proposed, yeah. the policies and his positions. And uh, we were talking to a Pennsylvania resident once, and he said that he went to protest. He was a business owner. He went to protest outside his office because he's a lieutenant governor. And uh, Everything was locked down in Pennsylvania. He wanted things to be opened up. And John Fetterman had a flag with a marijuana leaf outside his office. So that was that's his big issue yeah. is uh, getting marijuana legalized at a time when there are so many other things, crime, and at the time reopening the city as well. 
what can you say? If John Fetterman was a Republican, do you really think you'd be seeing all these headlines Not from the course. press right now? It would be like he has to drop out for the good of his health and, and for his family. And instead, they're trying to push this guy over the finish line. We yeah. all saw what we saw on Tuesday night, and it was not good. Joe, thank you for joining us Thanks, in Joe. studio. Happy Always Friday. Always a pleasure. Happy good Friday. Friday. Yeah. Again, brother. Bye. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.